I imagine a hypothetical line of social justice, a hypothetical line, an imaginary line of social justice that is parallel to the floor, also parallel to the earth. And on this imaginary line of social justice, things feel fair. Below it, one can be pushed down either as a member of a group or an individual through bullying, teasing, being stereotyped, having prejudices against one or one's group, being a survivor of genocide, being a, a scapegoat, being a discarded person. What I study is what happens above the hypothetical line of social justice. And in school, I was never taught to even notice this realm. Above the hypothetical line, one can be pushed up, believed, thought worthy of um, responsibility, considered to be responsible with money, considered to be capable of doing the schoolwork or any other kind of work. One can be seen as representative of the best. That's privilege. Above the hypothetical line of justice, one has more than one deserved because of circumstances of birth and other people's positive projections onto one. And below it, is disadvantage, that is unearned disadvantage. And I believe everybody in this room has a combination of both experiences, having more than we actually earned and having less than we actually earned. I don't think blame, shame, or guilt are relevant to the arbitrariness of our placement in privileged systems but I decided, beside the metaphor I originally used of the white privilege as an invisible knapsack, I can't see or feel on my back, but it's filled with assets that I can count on cashing in each day. Beside that, and the assets include the equivalent of freeze-dried food, emergency blanket, flashlight, maps, code books, guidebooks, letters of introduction, even maybe blank checks. But beside that, I decided to put a second metaphor. And that's the metaphor of white privilege as a bank account that I was given. I didn't ask for it, and I can't be blamed for it. But I can decide to put it in the service of weakening the system of white privilege. That is my energy. That is my financial commitment. That is my daily uh, life, and it's been transformative to use my bank account of white privilege to weaken the system of white privilege. It has absolutely transformed my life to be in work that feels right and is not based on guilt. I don't know exactly the wording for it, but I found that when I put my white privilege in the service of weakening white privilege, the bank account keeps refilling because I get the benefit of the doubt. So the cops arresting me for speeding tend to let me off. I get the benefit of the doubt because I'm a little old lady with white hair and, <laughs> and my papers are in order and my voice is soft. So I get left, let off. It's not fair. But I don't want to say, officer, officer, arrest me. Uh, <laughs> because that'll put our insurance up. <laughs> but every day in every way, bank account of white privilege refills and I get the benefit of the doubt. It has been transformative to use my, the power I did not know, I was never taught that I had, in the service of kinder, fairer, and more compassionate life for everyone. Thank you.